worthy by design. It is such a delight that you joined us on today's edition of Worthy by Design, brought to you by Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN TV. On this show, we focus on the journey from girlhood to womanhood and everything in between. I am Iberia Chims. Welcome. Now, girls in their adolescence could have varying levels of interactions with their parents. This may be related to how much they are friendly with and trust either or both of the parents. Now, some tend to share their everyday experience while others may be reserved. Generally, with more self-knowledge comes more independence, leading to a bit of restraint. That's a concern. Now, as per the topic, there's a tendency to hold back information that will bring condemnation or scolding. Now this may range from poor performance in school, ingesting a regulated substance, you know, involving in a fight, being bullied by peers, getting caught pilfering, or even disagreements with choices made by either of the parents. So here in the studio, we have joining this conversation a young lady who has evidently treaded this part of teenagehood and will be giving her perspective to this topic, she is Kem Jika Precious. <laughs> what a beauty. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. And with her is Mrs. Esther Wanejo. For she will crucify me because <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you too. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. She is the convener of Hangout with Zoe. Now, ladies. This conversation is very important to me because we all came from somewhere. Yeah. Some of us were teenage girls at some point and some of us still are. Are you still a teenager? <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. So it's very important. We need to talk about these issues. Yeah. First off, why do you think teenage girls need to speak up let me start with you precious okay speaking from their minds right yeah why they need to speak up you know they need to speak up because um, they can't handle a lot of things you know certain things can be beyond them because they only know what they know so when they go through things they need to speak up to somebody because they they will need help at that particular time so they actually need to speak up but finding the right person to speak to is, is another, another thing yeah okay so maybe um esther will help us with that <laughs> finding the right person who should they speak to they have this pressing issues on their mind who is the right person okay ideally the right person should be your parents, first of all, because... Wait, first of all, Esther is not a teenager or <laughs> somebody's wife. Okay? Uh -huh. yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, so ideally, the first point of call should be the parents. Mm. Mom, especially, because we are talking of teenage girls mm. here. So, but either of the parents is fine. But looking at what society is now, they don't go to mo their parents, they go to their peers. But um, based on the question, who should they speak to? They should speak to their parents. Teachers in school should be on that point of call in an ideal setting. Yes, teachers in school. Then mentors. Mentors who are towing the right path. Mentors who, not just their peers, they, they would speak to some of their peers because you can't stop them from having friends True. and interacting with those friends. But they should also speak to mentors, people they can look up to, people who are doing, you know, good, who are on a, who are towing a moral path that is good, that is not too legalistic or anything. Okay, people they can look up to and aspire to be like. Because when I want to be somebody, or I want to achieve what someone has achieved, I'll feel more relaxed 
asking them my questions. How did you get there? This is where I am. How do you think I can get to where you are based on where I am? So yeah, this, and of course, there are spiritual leaders in church. These are people that teenagers should be able to talk to in an ideal setting. Precious, right? Yeah. Precious will now be saying, hmm. Esther, you don't exactly. understand. Though. These people, I'm watching your mind. Yes. Hmm. These people, if you go to them, ha, <laughs> you are your own. <laughs> Pastor will tell you, pray about it. Mm -hmm. I'll be mm -hmm. spiritual leaders. Mm -hmm. so you have yeah. to be spiritual in this matter. Your mm -hmm. parents will be telling you, ah, shh, whoever told you to talk about mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah. So, okay, maybe I should, let me, let me let that hang for a bit, right? Okay. Let us talk about some of the issues first before we come to these other parts that I'm talking about. Okay. What do you think are the kind of information these people, these, your sisters, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they hold back? Mm. What do you think are those kind of information? Okay, there, there are a lot of information they hold back. Um, relationships, you know, the kind of friends and places they go, you know. Uh, they won't tell you they are going to a party because you are going to, you know, crucify them. So they don't let these kind of things out to you. And the things um, they try to wear, probably there is um, a way you have set a standard in the house to wear. When they go out and they do the opposite, they can't you tell can't you. Hear yes, they can't tell you those kind of things. So these are some of the things that they keep away and and also certain secrets also that they keep from their parents you know from getting things on their body like tattoos or they are taking drugs smoking they can't tell you those things they can't because you you won't take it easy on them so they keep it to themselves so how should the parents now approach them in order to get this information okay all right, um, in this issue, parents have to be um, wise in, in approaching them because... Like the issue of relationship. Relationship yeah. is like one-on-one. Once a girl starts to... Is that? Yeah. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. Relationship is like the first thing. So yeah. how should the parents handle such information? Okay. For the reason that they won't let this kind of information out to you. So you should try to engage them in conversations. Just randomly ask them a question that relates to relationship. Like, do you have a boyfriend or um, nobody likes you in your class and all of that. Just ask a question that can help you. Um, bring out the information that that you will need to help them. Just something that won't be too harsh, too harsh, you know, so that by the time you engage them, or just ask, what do you think about sex? You know, what do you think about having a boyfriend? And so they, they share their thoughts with you. So by the time they do this, you're able to pick their perspective on it. And so you'll be able to address them where they have gotten it wrong you know, and direct them aright. Don't appear too judgmental when they say certain things because it matters. Because it will even withhold them from saying certain things. When you start judging immediately, you need to let them speak their mind. You need to give them the ears for them to speak and allow them to say what is in their mind. And then you'll be able to approach what they have said in a friendly manner in a friendly manner because it is very, very important. That so from that. what you're saying now is, in relating with your peers, yeah. you've, you've had this issue with them. Yeah. That, you know, the parents are too harsh. They don't of listen course. and, mm. you know, they don't even want you to, they don't want to hear boyfriend of in the course. house, yes. you know. Yes. And how have you been able to get them to open up as a person? Okay. Because they are my friends, I, I, we move together. So and when, when there is something I notice that um, they are doing differently, you know, I, I will ask them questions. Or when um, he said how I will be able to get, get them, them to, to open up. To open to speak, up. Yeah. It's by asking questions. By asking questions, that always works. Yes, but you have to uh, um, ask in, in in a certain way because not everybody wants to. Not all of them want to open up to you 
you know but it depends on your relationship with the person that's what determines how the person will open up so to you. So this applies to parents? Yes, it applies to parents because, okay. yeah. Now let me come to you, Esther. Your, your um, Zoe, convenient Zoe. hangout with Zoe is about getting people to, you know, come to their full potentials exactly. and all of that. Now, if we're speaking of, you know, helping young girls open up about their experiences what would you be saying to parents listening out there who are wondering that ah this is my daughter in fact I don't I don't even know what to do again I'm out of ideas and all of that what would you be saying to her okay to the parents yes mm. I'm, I'm not I'm saying to her to the parents male or female because some, some fathers are so good with their daughters yeah. okay. yes so either male either father or mother what would you be saying to them Okay, so to get your teenage girl to open up, one of the things is to first of all kill your judgmental attitude and approach. Just know that these girls think you are backward. They already think you are a cake. Mm. So they don't they, understand. that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the pressure. You don't understand, you know, how they are faced with all these lures to you know the the pressures around. For example, in my father's days, there was no there was no social media, mm. so whatever pressure they had was just in a small circle. But right now, you have people from China and um, different parts of the country influencing your behaviors, so they will feel you don't know the pressure they are going through. So you need to first of all understand that, so that when you approach them, you approach them with the understanding that okay. I know for a certainty that I may not really feel what you're feeling, but you can trust me not to judge you. Mm. You can trust me to, to take whatever it is you tell me, to embrace it, and to join heads with you to work it out. Because another problem parents make is they impose a solution on the child. Yeah. So you should be able to get the child to say, okay, this work is... Work with you. Exactly, work with me. Because you can take a, a horse to the stream, like they say, you but you can't it. force it. So if you bring the child to be on the same page with you, make the same decisions with you, then they can agree to work with you. Then um, second to that, when you realize that maybe you, you, you are just not you know, getting through to your teenager, probably they've so disconnected from you. You, can want to, you, you may want to find out who they listen to. Maybe a sibling, a, um, a church um, person, some mentor of some sort, a, an uncle or an aunt, someone that they listen to, and then get that person to do the talking. It may, you may feel like you're a failure, but you're not, exa no, you're not a no, failure. No, no. You're only looking for help. Mm. If you knew it all... It's wisdom to yes. know when, you, when to seek help. Thank yeah. you. If you knew it all, your child won't go to school. You teach them at home everything they need to know. Give them their degree and mm -hmm. they'll enter the workforce. <laughs> but you don't know it all. And you have to accept that. So yes, probably some things you did made that child unable to trust you, talk to you. Fine, granted. But acknowledging the fact that, okay... I may not be able to do this, but if I can find someone who could do it, the goal is restoring that child back. Yeah. It doesn't matter who does the restoration, restore the child back. So that's, those are two things I think parents can begin to explore, mm. to get their teenagers to open up. To trust them exactly. and open up to them, right? It's very important. Now there's this, I'll stay with you Esther, there's this issue of peer pressure, right? And you, you know, you talked about social media, the fact that the world is now a global community yeah. and there's no place to hide, mm -hmm. right? Except you decide that mm -hmm. to go off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is not um, advisable, yeah. you know, always, right? Yeah. Now, how should us, we, okay, we as <laughs> girls, right? Yeah. We girls, how should we handle the peer pressure? we face daily right and those things that you know your friends will tell you Shh, if you talk it will if you talk it will buy fire it backfire if you talk are you exposing us if you talk how should they handle it mm. it's somehow in two parts mm. because even if they, for them to even know that their friend is giving them wrong advice is one thing entirely 
Because some girls don't know. You don't. Of course. True. So they don't know. And it's the parents who are supposed to teach them. <laughs> That's why I say it's in two parts. Mm. So I'm tempted to say, okay, um, just refuse. But what if you don't know? You're in a place where you don't know. That's why we need the help of our parents. Mm. Because the next thing is, okay, talk to your mommy. But mommy will not listen. Mommy will not listen or daddy will but not mommy listen. mommy doesn't get it. She doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. She will blame me. She will say it's my fault that men are chasing me. How is it my <laughs> fault? <laughs> you get these things. So in one part, I think the parents should try to, to create an environment in the house that makes the child able to come back home. Okay, because the truth is they might not have the best of mentors, the best of leaders, the best of guides yet. And especially when you don't even know these their friends, so you don't even know who you're talking to. Okay, but then the parents should really do some work there, a good deal of work. But then for the girl, for the child, I believe that when God created every person, he puts his spirit in that person, okay, which is that thing that makes you know, even a small child knows when they are doing something wrong. They know when, you know, a decision they're about to make or an action they did is wrong, and they try to hide it. So when you... When you are faced with certain things you don't know as a teenage girl, get qualified, um, get qualified advice, okay? Counsel. Counsel, exactly, from people who know, not your friends. Truth is, your friends only know little. They only, they've not lived life. Mm. They've not experienced the repercussions of the decisions they are making now. Mm. So they only know within the little confinements they have. So look for adults, teachers that are open and welcoming, that are trustworthy, that give good advices, okay? But I'm still, all these things, I'm still stuck on the fact that what if they don't even know what these good advices True. are? What if they have mentors or... Mm. or what if the assessment of, you know, the person they are talking mm. to? is wrong exactly <laughs> you, you look at this person and you feel they are giving you the right advice but it's just the wrong advice so it's the parents really have a, a very very large yes role i think the parents play. have a, a, a huge role to play two not just you know helping them not just giving them the environment you know to open up but also pointing them Thank to you. people mm. who have value to offer thank you right yes you know when you see people who are doing well you're like ah this woman is so so and so she's a lawyer or she's a doctor or she's an artist she's this and she's been doing so well and she's very sound ah that's somebody i would love you to you know talk to mm -hmm. it's not you're not imposing a child yeah. on that person yeah. but you're helping the child know the difference between black and white exactly. mm -hmm. so the child can easily know that okay this person is somebody I can easily run to when I cannot talk to my parents yeah you understand you know so in just regular conversation mm. I think you know parents can just say yeah. ah you know you know Mrs. Ajayi now mm. uh -uh, she's she's this she's that she's that she's that ah good woman very nice woman and her children are uh, have excelled in so 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 so, so. Ah, mm. the way she she brings up children or the way she talks to her children I really admire your swing sits in the hearts of the children so when the time of need arises mm. if those seats you have sown they feel ah I cannot talk to mommy ah Mrs. Ajayi comes to mind yeah. so mm. I think you know Parents can take advantage of, of you know, such to build, to inculcate in them the mm. sense of right and wrong. wrong. Okay. So, pressures. Yeah. Peer pressure. Yeah. I know you are sitting on top of it. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hot. Mm. Right? Mm. How should, how do you think parents can help their kids to fight this pressure? Okay. Coming from... I want to say a practitioner's point of view <laughs> okay. or an experiential mm. point, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. How they can help is first identifying who the friends are. But know. this is social media, right? Oh, okay. I am holding my phone. Okay. You know this you know the way teenage girls are attached to their phones? Yeah, my that's goodness, true. they don't drop it. Yeah. True or false? True, true. They don't drop it. Yeah. So you the parents mm. don't even get to see who the friends are or who the friends are not. Yeah. So with the Social media creating the distance yeah. in quotes. Mm. How can the parents, you know, just break through that wall? 
Okay. I think the, because they don't know who these people are, I think it has to be the values that they offer these children. That's what's going to help them, you know, because you can't be there to know what they are watching, who they are following. So you set an example for them. With the way you even, your own behavior as a, as a parent, you know, let them know that this is what is right and this is what is wrong and try to teach them things, you know. Probably you see something on social media as well that relates to them. You can bring it and talk about it mm. and then mm. you, you yes. give your perspective and guide them the right way. What, okay, this is not... If, as much as this is what social media has painted it to be, but it is not as this. Mm. So you, through those conversations, you are setting an example for them. You are pointing them to the right thing so that when they are with their phones and you are not there, you know, those teachings can always Just guide them. Yeah. Right. Amazing. Amazing. I don't know if you... You are still, you are still a girly now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, Esther... How can you tell when a girl is holding back? Mm. Right? Yeah. How can you tell that? Okay. First of all, the behavior. Yes, you see them trying to hold things back, hide. You know, you bump into them and then they rearrange. <laughs> they adjust themselves. <laughs> or, you know, I've, I've seen my brother a couple of times. You just enter and... You just notice this yeah. this <laughs> abrupt action, like, what is going on? Give me that phone. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so when teenagers begin to act suspicious, it's something to take note of. Also, the question is how you know that they are holding back. Yes, sometimes even when you bring up some, some topics or some things for discussion or they something pops it. up, they avoid it. They try to distract you from that situ from that mm -hmm. um, topic, you know, they take your, your attention somewhere else, okay, because they don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of all those things. And then, well, sometimes you can't access your phone, so you can't really know what mm -hmm. is going on. <laughs> yes, but intuition is also very important. Parents need to, parents need to be able to sense when something is wrong in the home, when something has gone off amiss, when, when my daughter who used to be jovial and happy is no longer jovial and happy. Because Parents, big brothers, big sisters, bring all Thank you, them. yes, mm -hmm. big brothers, big sisters, yes. Because this is not just about um, relationship and things. It could be about being bullied in school. Yeah, true. Yeah. And then it could be about being molested by a, an mm -hmm. uncle. Mm -hmm. And you keep telling... So an uncle that this child usually loves, she starts pulling away. It's something to take note of, mm -hmm. okay? And or you say go to uncle, and, say, and she says no, and she's even crying on top of it. And what some parents will do is that they push the child. Yeah. So these are things to take because note of because they trust the uncle. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and they feel the child is just throwing tantrums. But no, <laughs> the child knows why they are mm -hmm. avoiding. You should inquire. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not just only in the. <coughs> relationship aspect it's in so many other True. aspects yeah. so True. it's very important to be intuitive mm. and you the, the parents will be only will only be able to you know pick these things if they are even close enough maybe let me not say too close but close, close enough, enough. Mm. Yes. close enough to, to observe, to observe yes. these changes in mm. personalities mm. Mm. because you won't always be around exactly yeah. well, at least the times you're around yeah. keep your eyes to the ground yeah. exactly mm. for you yeah. mm? how would you tell that your parents are not giving you the right environment okay. to open up. Okay. From your experience and that of your friends. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm not tell your dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First, I know my parents, of course. So you know the kind of people they are and what they believe. Their beliefs are. So you know what they like and what they don't like. So I can't open up about something I know that he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, because he w he's going to be judgmental about it. He's going to, you know, bring up that AK kind of um, hey. this. So so you, you can't expect me to to, to ex uh, expose those kind of things. And and another thing is availability. Or, or of the parents sometimes when they are not there they are not there when you need them you know and and 
teenagers always open up to somebody who is available. available. So, so if you're not there at the right time where they need you, someone else who is there, whether the person is qualified to give a good advice or not, mm. is the person they lean to. You know to talk to about those things and whatever they get from it <laughs> it's something that the parents will also have to deal with at the long run mm -hmm. so um to open up to them um they have to be an an, an a friendly environment if that is not there there's no how I, I can open up you know they have to be that friendly environment that will give me the room to talk about it and the availability of these parents and also not um, probably not bringing up um, a, an issue and then you're already um, rebuking it and all of that. You're, you're already uh, pushing it away or, okay, let's talk, look, let's talk about it another time. And this keeps prolonging. I'll, I'll definitely look for options somewhere else. Mm, <laughs> we'll go on a short break. We'll return the conversation on what your teenage daughter never tells you We'll continue. At the King's Court, we sing, we dance, we praise and worship God with instruments, spoken words, dramas, and in every way God deserves to be praised. Burdens are lifted. Victories are won when we engage God in the battles of our lives. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In every situation, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So join me every Tuesday by 6 p.m. at the King's Court for an exciting experience. The name of Jesus Christ, our King. Welcome back to the show. I have been speaking with two amazing, amazing ladies. Njideka Precious and Esther. So we have been talking about what your teenage daughter never tells you. It's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. But it's a learning curve for all of us. Now, before we went on the break, Esther talked about, you know, having to tell your parents something that is at variance with the family values. How, would you, how do you think parents should handle such information? Is it to raise the king? You know, the Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. <laughs> so, is it to raise the rod of correction? Mm. Or how should, is there a better way to handle it? Is it to postpone the evil day? Ah, we'll talk about this issue tomorrow. You know, she also spoke about that. How should parents handle this? Okay. Um, okay, before I go into how they should handle Please it. Yes. So, the scripture says, of course, the road of correction, not the road of punishment. Most times what parents do <laughs> is they punish. Mm. Okay, discipline is not punishment. I just need to put that out there. Yes, so, <coughs> of course you should correct. When, okay, back to the question. When a teenage, your teenager comes up with these things that are against family value, the first thing is you need to realize that they are not approaching you for judgment. I'm sure they've judged themselves. True. They are not approaching you to show them where it is written wrongly in the <laughs> Bible. <laughs> mm. They are approaching you because they need consolation. They need consolation. They need correction. Counsel. And they need and they, they need counsel. And they also need to know that they are not judged. They need to know that there is a way out. Mm. They need okay? closure. And thank you. That's the word. They need co they need closure. To know that there's a way out, so don't come with don't come with um, a lot of judgment and um, and the cane and the rod, you know, to beat them because you can't beat that kind of um, 
You can't beat what they've done away from it's them. To beat the spirit out of them. Mm -hmm. You can't flog the spirit out of them. <laughs> okay, it's a behavior. It's a behavioral issue that can only be handled, you know, by addressing the behavior, not by flogging them. It will not do anything. Okay, so first of all, you need to... In fact, the fact that they could even open up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is what they, need. they needed that closure. They need to know that there's a way out. And I'm sure mommy can do this. So, number one, don't mind your facial expressions. Mm -hmm. Mind what you say. Don't postpone it because you you give them a lot of things to think about, and they'll they'll die so many times <laughs> before yeah, sure. before that conversation even happens. Mm. Mind how you respond. Instead, embrace them. No matter how hard it is, when you embrace them, you do two things. Number one is you reassure them. Number two is even if you have a facial expression to show, they are not <laughs> seeing it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so embrace them. Express your shock and calm down. <laughs> and it gives you time to process, to process your yeah. thoughts. So you don't react in anger or react, you know, in a way that will push the child further away. Because it's just like Adam in the garden. Adam had sinned and he just went to hide. And that when God, God saw him it commits the sin yeah. and he still came and said, Adam, where are you? Because I want that relationship restored. Mm -hmm. But Adam just ran off even though God was calling him. So for your child to even come to you, you shouldn't do things that will push them further away. So embrace them and then talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. You can embrace them, tell them it's okay, it's going to be all right. If you don't know what to say at that point, because sometimes it's such a shocker, you didn't expect mm -hmm. your child to come up with this kind of thing. So you, you, you're still trying to really process your thoughts, but just reassure them everything will be fine. And then take some time to think. If it's something beyond you, involve help. Get help. Get help. Right. There are a lot of um, um, people who are schooled. When I mean school, they've done trainings on how to handle teenagers. Some are specialized in maybe areas of sex and sex-related issues. Some on drugs. You know, on different areas. Get the help you, your child needs. But let them know that you are with them. You've not condemned them. And you are ready to walk that path of of um, restoration with them. Mm. Amazing. You're with them, you have not condemned them, and yeah. you're ready to walk the path of restoration with them. Ah. Mm. I know we have wonderful parents mm -hmm. that will take in every, every, every advice yeah. that is coming out from this conversation. Now, Esther, let me come to you. We have already gone to the next question I wanted to ask, you know, that what could lead to distrust you know, you have you have talking about you know reactions and mm. all of that. Now, let me ask: Does what are the factors that could lead to difference to parental advice? Okay. Your par the parents give an advice and decide that this advice is old school. <laughs> <laughs> we need to school it in you know yeah. the internet yes. way. You know. Mm. So, what do you think? Okay. Okay, what would cause distrust, right? The fact was Okay, you, the, you can you can start from there. Okay, the, the fact was that that will cause distrust. I mean, you had mentioned you know, some yeah. You yeah, first is um trust, right? Your 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 child cannot trust what you say when you don't trust them. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you you need to show that you trust these people so that they can also trust you. Uh, yeah, so that's one of, one of the things. And when you are not living um, an exemplary life, so when you say something and you are doing another, do so if you are... As I yeah. As I do. So how, how do you want them to take that in? You are doing this and you are telling me. So they'll, they won't follow that. So, and different, right? Um, what makes them to respect, right? To respect um, what their parents have set them to do. You know, um, with the mentality that we have, uh, you know, our parents, and our parents, you know, we have to obey what they say. And sometimes we don't have that, you know, we, we don't have any other option than to do it, even if we don't um, like it or appreciate it. So we just go further to do that out of because we because of our parents you know we just do what they ask us to do even when it is against our wish i don't know if i'm get answering your question okay so maybe maybe you could just get that into place to say okay um 
a parent wants their children to act in a particular way, mm. especially when a child is a teenager, is no longer the age of instruction. Do this, do that, do yeah. that. There should be an understanding. Yeah. There should, you know, this is why you should do this, yes. right? Because even the Bible, when the Bible is saying, do this, do this, do this, the Bible is also giving reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father, that your days may be long. Yeah. So I think in also relating with our children, we should be able to make them see reasons with us. Yes, yeah. Especially true. at this stage of yeah. you know, teenagehood. It is not to, you know, you know, just force the hammer, <laughs> put in the nail. Mm. The child should be able to understand that the reason you, I am asking you to, to do this, do this yeah. is because of this, so yeah. that we can get this results mm. and get the child to, you know, render his or her own opinion, mm. exactly. right? Yes. In, in them rendering the opinion, you're able to see what's in their hearts. Yes. Because the words, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. speaks. So you can assess what mm. is in the child's heart yeah there's no way you give you you end up with an instruction after all this conversation mm. you end up with an, an instruction yeah. and that child will not keep true or false mm, 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 yes true that's true because yeah. it looks like this was a combined effort yes we worked yes. together to arrive yes. at Those this solution impose. right yeah because i know that you guys don't like imposition yes of course Mommy's, uh, mommy is going out mommy said sweep the room wash the curtains wash the plates make sure food mm. is ready i'll be back by four Mm -hmm. You know, you go sit down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. play. <laughs> Think it <through> first. <laughs> I beg, let me rest first. Mm. Right. But if, if mommy had come in the morning and said, um, Precious, mm. what do we even do today? You know, we, we need to make some food. We were going to church in the evening. So how do we how do we get all the things we need to do? Mm. You're the one raising the um, suggestions. Yes, so, yes. Right? Yeah. So you, you're not like, okay, maybe, maybe I have to have my bath very early so that mm. I can meet up with this, meet up with that. Then yeah. I'll meet you up at the market so we get the things, come back. Yeah. Before you know, we'll be yeah. done. It won't take yeah. anything. Yeah. And you feel like the boss. <laughs> exactly. Boss, right? True, yeah. Because that giving them that kind of authority mm -hmm. they perceive themselves to be in authority at par with their parents yeah. ah. mm -hmm. will you they mm -hmm. will be yes they yes. will be right yes, yes. will not th those frictions will still be there mm. but not as much mm -hmm. not as much and when a child feels or when a young young lady feels like she's in that position of authority you know that she can share ideas yeah. with her mother what will make it difficult for her to open up? It will be Nothing. so easy to open because in those kind of conversations come, ah, your mm. boyfriend did not call you today. Mm -hmm. Your phone has not been ringing mm -hmm. since morning. What is mm. happening? This one you finish the work so fast. That boy that used to call you, <laughs> that boy used to come you. You know that kind of mm. thing. It just creates that kind of mm. environment that we are looking for, yeah. just so that. Who, who said well, our girls are bad? No, mm -hmm. they're not. They're not. They are not. Mm -hmm. We just need a little pruning here mm -hmm. and there. Yeah. Nobody is perfect. Even our parents are not perfect. In fact, we're not even saying the parents are not doing enough. They are doing their best. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's always a room for what? Improvement. Improvement. Amazing. Ladies, you guys have been so amazing on this conversation. Now, let's move it a notch further. Breaking news. <laughs> gang, gang. Mm -hmm. The daughter comes home with <laughs> some heartbreaking news for the mother or for the father or for the Parent, family. Yeah. How do you think, let me, let me come to you. How do you think, mm. first, breaking news should be given. Let me start from there. Uh, because even <laughs> the parents are flesh and blood. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, a teenage girl has bad news mm. to give mm. we have talked about some of the bad news mm. drugs you know mm. pregnancy mm. failure in school mm. you know wrong association and all of that bullying we have talked mm. about some of those things how should a young girl a teenage girl mm. break some of this because wisdom starts from you know how should she break some of this news to her parents so that the mother does not die of high pp <laughs> okay um euphemism she um 
you have to find a mild way, you know, who, because you know that there's a way you're going to say it and they'll just flare up immediately. So we, we just find a way somehow, you know, to paint the thing, you know, to just arrive at that point. Okay, we did this. So because no matter how you still have to say because they'll find out mm. so you you just have to tell them no you just you just to find the right atmosphere mm. you know to break that news to them probably when everybody is happy and they are discussing about something and then probably you can just say mommy do you know uh, what what if um, what if this happens to uh, this child or so <laughs> you know <laughs> to, to just get what they are going to say then then you just have to say okay i am that person mm. i am that person and i did this and and so you just have to tell them because they need to know to help you mm. you know to get they out of that situation know. they need to know yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, I was, this, yes. yes i was going to say also if you have two parents if you're unfortunate to have two parents you may want to find which of them is you are, you feel you know more comfortable, more comfortable mm. talking with the one who will not react and smash mm. the TV or do something <laughs> crazy. So that's also another way you could, yeah. you know, bring this up to your parents. And it just has to come out somehow, like mm. she said. Mm. Yes. So the parents should also move, talk a bit about it, mm. <coughs> manage your emotions. I think every teenage parent um, who should just know that. Well, I, I don't want to make it a definite mm. um, statement because some parents were very intentional about how they train their child. So there's already that warm environment at home. They can talk and, you know, even they can talk, they can interact. And some of these um, pressures or some of these um, flaws is very unlikely to happen for a child. But then for some other parents who were not all too intentional and so your mm. child has maybe... You, you suspect your child has dabbled into some wrong things or, you know, just make up your, just know that, <coughs> how that put, imagine the worst case scenario and get prepared for it. Mm. Just mm. imagine the worst case scenario and prepare for it. And like I said before, remember you're not preparing to, you're not, your, the intention is to restore the child. So whatever your preparation is should not involve chasing them out or pushing mm. them further from you. Mm. Yes, so prepare for it. You have to prepare ahead of it. Mm. When none of when no bad report comes, you bless the name of the mm. Lord. If any comes, you are ready. Mm. You are ready to face it. Mm. Yeah. Because sometimes when bad reports come, they are just part of a testimony. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. For yeah. Real. But that depends on how you handle mm -hmm. it. Yes, yes, that's true. Mm. That's you true. Want to add something? Yeah, I wanted to say that another way they can, you know, break this news is also find someone that their parents respect mm. and, and listen to. You can come along with that person, mm. you know, mm. they can give you that support mm. to talk to them about that. Mm. So yeah. that's, a, that's another way. So this thing, are we practicing this? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, we, we do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You yeah. know, ladies, you guys have been amazing on this conversation. Before we go, I just want you guys to give us, give give the viewers your one penny. Is it one penny advice? <laughs> one, one naira advice. <laughs> just give the viewers your last words, your parting words. Okay, mm. starting with okay, precious. <laughs> All right, okay. I would like to say it um, to the parents mm. that the like the Bible says, you should make room for each other's faults. Mm. You should know that your children, as they are growing up, they are bound to make mistakes, and you shouldn't hold it against them. Mm. You shouldn't hold it against them. One thing they need from you is empathy. They need you to feel the way they feel. So you need to give them that listening air, you know, for them to say what is on their mind. And don't be too judgmental. Don't attack them when they say things. Just try to know, let them know that, oh, it wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. You just try to make them feel okay that, you know, that it wasn't their fault really mm -hmm. for it doing that yes you know let them feel comfortable at that particular time and then probably at the at the um, long run you can 
guide them that okay that this is actually what you should do in certain situations so and for teenagers you know um i know our parents is the god that we can see so we need we need to talk to them we need to talk to them um in when we are going through things because you can't trust what people are saying outside because not everybody has the mind of christ to guide you uh, correctly so you, you need to talk to your parents just, you just need to talk to them, you know. No matter what they do, they they are not going to kill you because I'm sure they love you, they love you, and they have the, uh, your best interest at heart. So you need to talk to them, you know. Just find a way, maybe bringing somebody or even writing it as a letter because that's <laughs> yes, that's what most people because it's easy to vent. yes, you just write it and then drop it somewhere for them. They they will see it and they read it. And I I tell you that that can even calm them down. You know, thinking that okay, you took your time to write this, you know, and uh, so they can, you know, try and you know and address that. And parents should also engage people that can mentors, help mentors, counselors. yes, counselors. When you feel that okay, you've done everything and this child is not, you know, trying to open up to you. You should look for someone that these children can talk to, be free with, somebody that they are comfortable with. So you know, direct them to that person to help you solve the situation. Thank I like you. that writing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did it as a teenager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did something wrong at home and my popsy was so upset I had to write a letter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, please, on the basis of that, you're yeah. <laughs> 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 right, Okay, final words to the parents. Please don't push your child away. Mm. You know, one thing that was an issue for me was I was closer to my dad, so sometimes I want to tell him these things and he's like, go meet your mommy. And I don't want to talk to my mommy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so please, don't push your child away. Mm. You may feel, okay, because she's a girl, the woman will have more things to say to her because he is a boy, daddy has more things. But there's a reason they came to you. Yeah. They, they feel more comfortable with you. They feel you will not judge them. And even if you don't have the right thing to say to them, like the, the exact advice, and you feel your wife or your husband would, still embrace them. Let them talk to you. Mm -hmm. Then later talk to your, your mm -hmm. spouse about it. Get the wisdom. Two of you might even you know, talk, to, add, talk to the child together. So please don't push your child away when they come to you. And like you said, if you need help, please look for help. It's not bad parenting. It's actually optimal parenting. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Mm. This has been a very beautiful and insightful conversation. I wouldn't want any parents mm. to miss this conversation. In fact, I don't want any girly out there to mm. miss this conversation. All right. Ears that listen, eyes that see, minds that are intuitive and a lot of love, in fact, over excess love, in fact, mm -hmm. is what every parent or guardian must possess to break through the walls holding our teenage daughters back from opening up. Yeah. They certainly will if you just give them the right environment. Yeah. A very big thank you to our wonderful <laughs> guest. Mm -hmm. ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Precious. <laughs> thank <Up> you. <laughs> Thank and you. Esther, <laughs> 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 all right, we've had a very beautiful conversation. Thank you for your time and mm. insight. Oh, I'll have you both again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, viewers, mm. do join us again next week, same time, same station, for another yeah. thought provoking edition of the show. Until then, our girls, our ladies, mm. our women, remember that you are worthy mm. by design. I am Ibera Chips. See you next time.